Could there be a coronavirus correction with infections on the rise for the stock market? Could Crown find a white knight to save it from Blackstone? And the lessons from the coronavirus crash and boom one year on. I'm Peter Switzer. I'm Paul Ricard. And we're, we're mad, mad about, about money. money. All right. Shh. Okay, overnight, uh, a real bellwether company for you know the, the stocks that we often buy, that is Caterpillar, fell on the basis that infections in Europe in particular are starting to worry it might slow up the reopening of the global economy. Yeah, I mean, look, the US market has been so strong, Peter. I mean, I, I guess you're going to get inevitable setbacks like, you know, the sort of the third wave that's sort of sweeping Europe. Yeah. Uh, and everyone's sort of priced the reopening trade into be so quick. And yeah. Yeah, it's clearly going to be a bit slower. So I guess there's a bit of a pullback. Our market hasn't been done as well, Peter, so I'm not sure it's going to flow through to our market. But, you know, the US is just a cent or two below its all-time high. And it wasn't, it only did last week we were setting new records in oh, yeah. the US market. So you, you never go up, you know, in straight lines, in, in straight lines right? You're going to get little bumps like this. Yeah, and I, so I'm thinking there could be a, a correction or a pullback. But for me, it's a buying opportunity for the person who doesn't have to make money in the short term, but wants to make money in the long term. And it's going to be interesting to see whether Qantas' share price falls today, because the US airlines did fall overnight. That's a company I want to buy for the long term. Yeah, and I guess we're just going to follow the, follow the US, Peter. So, I mean, little, our market just seems to have been struggling a little bit the last week or two. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, I guess there's a bit more sort of softness to come in while we go through just a couple of jitters in the US. But I'm like you, it's a buying opportunity, but I'm not quite rushing in. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to uh, settle, then find the stocks that I want to hold in a year's time. They're the ones that will be doing well. Let's go to the next story, Paul. Could Crown find a white knight to beat Blackstone? Well, look, I mean, judging by the market's price reaction on Monday, you would have said no, because the market, sorry, you would have said yes, because the market was certainly pricing in a higher offer. It actually took the price from the Crown shares above the Blackstone. In, in so the they've Fed. offered what? 11, 11.85. Yeah, and and on, on a Monday, Crown shares were above that, closed above that, yeah. suggesting the market, and Blackstone's bid is highly conditional. Remember, yeah. it's not only got to arrange debt financing, that's the first problem, but it's actually got to get approval from each of the state regulators. And, yeah. You know, that's no with with a royal commission now in Victoria and in uh, uh, and in WA. Yeah. That's no lay down Mazer, right? I mean, they're, there's, that's not going to be quick, and it's uh, all sorts of issues. So I don't think Blackstone's bid was by any means a lay down Mazer. The market went higher, saying mm-hmm. there's probably another bid coming. Yeah. Yesterday, with sort of you know a few sort of friendly newspapers suggesting that that James was maybe about to would accept the Blackstone bid. Yeah. You know, the price dropped and obviously the market's starting to price in the risk of that. Is there another party out there? Look, I don't know. What, what's your take well, on that? Well, some people are suggesting that Star could make a, a crack at it. Others say, well, if Blackstone wins it, they might actually recruit Star's team to actually run their their casino. Because then Blackstone buys, hangs on for a while, eventually lists again and makes money. That's what private equity do. So, well, I... I think there's a possibility another one will come. Most people believe the price they offered was well below what you'd pay for a company like this if there was no crap going on yeah, and no royal and, commissions. And, but the crap is a big lot. I mean, you know, those royal commissions crap. are going to take a long time. Yeah. And uh, they're clearly going to find, in many cases, that the existing management weren't the right people to run it. No. And they're going to set a whole lot of rules around who will be the right people to run it. I don't know where the Blackstone are going to qualify, but maybe they get the star people on board. Who knows? But it's not going to be... An, it's, they're, they're all going to be difficult regulatory uh, hurdles to overcome. Yeah. And that's why I think the market's saying to you, well, maybe maybe there's someone else coming out there, Peter. But I... I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't. I don't know with the casino business. There's necessarily a lot of really clean off rates, are there? <laughs> you, you might know more than we do. But yeah, that's uh, right. you tell us about them. Let's go to the big story. This is a year on from like March 23 was that worst day in the market, or the last worst day, and then we rebounded out of it, Paul. What are the big lessons do you think? Well, let's, let's just relive the history. We got to 7163 on the on the 20th of February last year. That's yeah. only 13 months ago. And on the 23rd of March, yeah. about 30 to three days later, yeah. we were at 4546. That's when that, pandemic was mentioned. Yep, that was when Afterpay got down to $8.90. Ooh, if oh. you were one of those people, and there weren't many who were able to buy it there. A fall of 36.5%. Yesterday being the one year anniversary of the bottom of 4546, we closed at 6745. So we're back up 48.3%. Of course, you know, 
percentages work, the mass doesn't work, you need to go up a lot more than you, yeah, than you go you're down. you're coming off a lower base. But for me, look, I mean, I, look, I think you're going to talk about the rotation trade, but the big lesson for me, it's obviously long-term investing lessons, mm. but the big lesson for me, and it was the same in the GFC, is there were some fabulous opportunities to invest in companies through a lot of capital raisings, yep. right? And yeah. we saw exactly in the GFC, and what happens, of course, is that every company board got scared, yep. right? Brokers being brokers say, hey, here we go, we can <laughs> make some fees. You missed a company over here, you need to raise some capital. Mm. Out they roll, they start to pressure it, the analysts get worried about the, the company, talk falls. about too much debt, share price falls. Company boards say, whoa, 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 we've got to raise some capital. They were bargain based, but just to right. give you one, NAB was at $14.15. Where is it today? $24, $25, right? Yeah. That was asked April last year. There were a heap of them. Almost every, you know, every second major company raised capital. If you invested, I think, in every one of them, you'd be in front now. The same happened in the GFC. So when we get the next big crash, mm. you know, five years, 10 years, whatever it is, and there'll be another one, folks, and you see all these companies raising capital, they are great times to invest. So yeah. keep some powder dry. That was a big lesson for me again, Yeah, Peter. I've got to say, Paul hasn't taught me much in my lifetime, but he did teach me that many years ago, and it's an absolutely spot-on tip. He has taught me a few other things as well. But I, what I love is what, what we see is quality companies are at fantastic bargain basement prices when there are crashes, and then you get a period where certain stocks do really well. The stocks that did well in 2020 were, yep. the, um, were the stay-at-home stocks. Now those stay-at-home stocks and the tech stocks, the growth stocks, they're giving away to it's what we call a rotation out of those stocks into the reopening trade stocks and the value companies. They'll eventually change, and that, but they're going to go for a rise for some time, but then there'll be some great buying opportunity from those stay-at-home stocks that will be rejected, which are really good quality companies like the JB Hi-Fi's and Harvey Norman's and whatever. So the, the bottom line is this. If you don't know these lessons, watch Man About Money, and also be a subscriber to The Switzer Report, where the great news information is always there. I'm Peter Switzer. Now, before we go, small cap conference no, next no, Wednesday. I was supposed to do oh. the LQ first, then I was going to ah, do Okay, that. I'll go back to sleep, See, folks. Like he's, he's taking Take over the show. I'm Peter Switzer. I'm Paul Rico. And we're Man About Money. Now, before we go. There, that week. didn't work as well as, me, as my outcome. This is live. Yep, this is live. live. Yep, so shut the hell up. All right. Small cap conference next week, only one week to go until our 2021 Switzer Small and Micro Cap Virtual Investor Day webinar takes place on Tuesday, March 30, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. You can hear from the CEOs of some of the country's most interesting small and micro cap companies. This includes a 10 minute presentation from each CEO followed by a five minute Q&A session with the audience. And Paul and I will actually analyze these companies as they go through as well. Get exposure to a wide group of companies. We're offering you, you, our loyal audience, a free ticket to attend. And if you want to attend, look at the link on the screen and click it on and make sure you, you go there and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks for joining us.